How's it going people, Sam and Slabber here, and this is the Fire Maker Curse Full Guide. Happy days. I am ill, this should be fun. Let's have at it. So, to start off, to get over here, you need to head just south of Eagle's Peak. And to start the quest, you need 64 agility, 72 fire making, and 74 constitution, or HP. So yeah, not a lot. There's actually no quest requirements for this, which is kind of nice if you aren't one to quest much. But you do get quite a nice reward from this, which we will get into at the end. Item-wise, you'll be needing food, armor, and a weapon, pretty much. Yeah, there's actually no item requirements for this. You get the item you need within the actual quest itself. I would recommend, though, either dual-wielding crossbows or using two fastest melee weapons, such as an Abyssal Whip and an Enhanced Excalibur or a Dragon Dagger. And then a Super or Extreme set for whichever kind of combat you're using for the boss. But to start it, go ahead and talk to Phoenix. He's right by here. This place is literally just south of Eagle's Peak, or just west of the entrance to Trinum Stronghold. Quickly run through the options, and eventually this fellow will allow you to start the quest. So there we go, you can now start the quest. Go ahead and do that. So tell them let's go and we'll get started. So straight away you'll appear in this room with a bunch of flames on the floor. Go ahead and talk to Flint, he is standing right next to you and he will actually give you a pitch can and we'll be needing this to light fires of our own. So the idea is here, we now have to make a picture of an arrow, as you can see it's already half made, you quite literally just have to fill in the blanks. If you simply left click on the actual can itself, it'll create a fire directly in front of whichever way you're facing. However, you can right click on it and say make fire here, and it'll make a fire exactly where you're standing. There's not much to this one, simply fill in the gaps and make the arrow. Bear in mind there is a time limit on all of the fires throughout the entirety of the quest as they will run out eventually. So you do actually need to be fairly quick. As you can see I missed one and fires have gone out so now I've got to restart it again. like that. So as soon as you've made your arrow, you'll have a little cutscene and you will fall through the floor. So you'll suddenly appear in a very dark room. You can just barely make out a fire pit on the floor. You need to like that. quickly crack, go through all of the chat in here, there is quite a lot of it. And pick up the journal as soon as they finish talking. As soon as you do, there will be more chat to go through. Once you take the journal, Char will start talking to you. Go ahead and skip through all of this. The lights will then go out again, quickly light the fire again, and one of them will be dead.
As usual, run through all the chat, don't actually need to read it, and as soon as you finish talking, head through the door. So again, we now got a new fire puzzle. The easiest way to find out what you need to do is quickly check the journal and click on unknown. And you'll see this little symbol here. We actually have to make that on the floor. There's not much I can really tell you other than watch the screen, pretty much. As it's kind of hard to describe what needs to be lit and where. But that is pretty much it. Soon as you've done it, rocks will start falling from the sky. Just avoid them, make sure you've got an imagery space. Pick up the boulders and plant them on the east side of the room. And you can add them to the wall and eventually we'll make a ladder. So finally, once you've made it, we'll appear in the room we was just in with the little fire pit. Go ahead and light that up again. As soon as you've done that, pick up the journal again. If for whatever reason it won't let you, go ahead and talk to Flint first, and then you should be able to pick it up. As soon as you do, Char will appear again, and this time we need to kind of take someone prisoner. So just quickly run through the chat with Char, it doesn't particularly matter what she's got to say. And as soon as you have you can click on the column or pillar on the south side of the room right next to the fire and we can choose who to tie up so go ahead and click on that and tie up twig because twig is evil so eventually the fire will go out once again go ahead and light it and the door will open so head on through. So for this one we have a slightly different fire puzzle. Go ahead and pick up a couple of yellow powders and the same with the red powders. And to start off simply use your yellow powder and that will make your fire yellow. And if you need the picture of the full thing then all you need to do is check a journal it'll show you what you actually need to make it's fairly straightforward and again I can't really say what you need to do it's much easier if you just look on screen it's basically a circle within a circle to change the color of your fires simply use the uh, powders depending on which color you want that's pretty much it if you happen to run out, then you can pick more up from the stand. In fact, I recommend picking up quite a few, as we will be needing them later on as well. But there is a stand in the next room, so you can get them there as well. But as soon as you've done it, the firewalls will then start to come. Similar to the QBD, just stand in the gap. And then there'll be one more to avoid. Fairly straightforward. If for whatever reason you decide to run into it, you will take a fairly hefty amount of damage, but yeah, one food should cover it, pretty much. As soon as you've avoided both of those, the door will crack open, head on through, and this area is timed. 
So hopefully you've got this video on the same screen as your playing RS. Basically to start off you want to head all the way to the west. It's fairly straightforward this one I've got to be honest. Once you're at the entire west side light the fire and then pull the switch right next to you. Basically the more time you spend in here the lights will get lower and lower until eventually you get kicked out. Hence lighting of the fire. So once you've done that, head directly east, all the way to that pillar we just lifted. Bear in mind, the lava spewing out of the floor, as well as the little fires on the pillars themselves, they will hurt you, and they do do a fairly significant amount of damage. But once you're on the east side, light the fire, and switch again. This will open up the central passage, good times. Head back over to your west. And we're now heading in towards the centre of the room. Head to your west past the central pillar and the little fireball. Then you want to head north. Run past this little section here until you hit the central section. Pull the switch on the centre little area. The central cross. As soon as you've done that, it'll raise a pillar slightly to your east which is where we're going to go now, so go ahead and jump east at this point you'll notice the fire is slowly going out, you need to light this one give us some more time heal up if needs be, then jump back across to the west back onto the central pillar, the centre cross this time you want to head to the northeastern side and pull this switch over here that will get rid of the fire to your west, go ahead and jump back over go past the central cross and head to the west and there will be another fire and another switch for you to pull Once you pull that, another set of fire will disappear slightly to your north. Head back towards the central cross, and on the west side of the cross is a switch you can pull. Go ahead and pull that. Now you can head up north. There are traps on the floor here, like that. If, like me, you happen to fall down it, no need to panic, you should still have plenty of time. Simply head all the way back, all the switches will be in the same place as you left them. The only thing that will be different is the fires. Should have more than enough time to get back. Exactly the same as we just did, head towards the west of the centre cross, pull the switch, head north and then head up to your west. There's more floor switches here, quickly run across. Light this fire and pull this switch. This will open up the northeast side. Go ahead and run back and jump over. And finally, head to your northeast. And we can now move on to the next room. So, it seems before, go ahead and light the fire, then take the journal. So, as usual, as soon as you take that, Char will start talking to you. Go ahead and ignore her. Skip through everything she says. This time, we need to imprison another person. And this time, it is Sarah. So, go ahead and tie Sarah to the pole. As soon as you do that, lights will go out once again. Go ahead and relight them. And then the door will open. Carry on. So, this room we need to make 
kind of like a hash symbol. So take a couple of the yellow powders, a couple of the red powders, and some blue for good measure. And we now need to make this little hash symbol up. Basically the top right two lines are both yellow. So we should simply start off with yellow. Light this fire right by here. Then switch to red and light the fire here. Then move over to the other side and light fire here. Then move back onto yellow and light a fire in the center. Then make the line at the top. Unfortunately, I kind of got thrown south anyway. Simply douse it out and light the fire here again. Light the final yellow fire by here. And this one right next to me is red, so switch back to red. And then the final red one is down to your south. And you will make the hashtag. But as soon as you do that, firewalls will come. The easiest way to do this is run straight to your west. Or you can simply try to avoid them, although the third one will be a solid brick wall pretty much. So try to avoid them. If you take damage, you take damage. You really don't need to worry. You can't die in this little quest. So as soon as you exit this room, you will appear in here. I'm going to fast forward this bit because there's pretty much nothing to it. Uh, basically random balls will appear all around the screen and they'll try to kill you. They don't do a humongous amount of damage, in fact you could probably stand still throughout the entirety of it and as long as you've got half an imagery of food you'll probably survive anyway. It is very easy if however you are an extremely low level and have almost no life whatsoever then you want to try and create the fires to try and cordon off these random balls that are trying to kill you. It is very straightforward, not much to this one at all. It's quite literally rinse and repeat. This will take you 5-10 minutes, as it does last quite a long time. But you can actually do this without lighting one fire whatsoever. You can simply run around the room. It is that simple. Sure, I'll join you as soon as this is finished. And there we have it, finally it's complete. Eventually the door will open and we can carry on. So again we'll appear in this room where we got to kidnap someone and tie them to a wall. Go ahead and light the fire once again. You know the drill by now. Pick up the journal. Char will start mumbling. Go ahead and ignore her. And this time we need to tie up Twig. So as soon as you tied him up, fire will go out, go ahead and relight it, same as before. And the door will open and we can carry on.
So this one you'll need a couple of blues, a couple of red powders and a couple of yellow powders so go ahead and grab them. Take note of the little fire we can make up in the northeast. We don't need a lot yet but we will do after we've solved this puzzle. So again if you need the picture simply look at the journal and check out the unknown. That is what we're going to make. As always I've put a little screen capture on the video now so you can see the completed version and you can see how I actually do it. So you shouldn't have too much problem with this one, it's fairly straightforward, it's kind of like a spade, easy way to put it. But first things first, start off with the blue, then move on to just making all the reds. Don't actually need the yellow for this one. As soon as you do that, we now need to light the fire just to your northeast, as everything will go pitch black. As soon as you do it, quickly right click and take torch. And we need to make our way north. You will be walking through all of this. As you're walking up here, there'll be tendrils or kind of like weird octopus hands coming around the screen from either the top, right, left or bottom of the screen as you can see there. You can either blatantly ignore them like I do for the most part, but they will damage you for about a thousand damage. To prevent them from attacking you, you can click on near the very top of the screen and you'll be able to burn them away. It is pretty interesting, gotta be honest. But to actually click on them, you do need to click almost right at the very edge of your screen. Otherwise the option won't come up. Like that. And if you do it quick enough, you won't take any damage. So this is a one-way path. Just keep an eye out for the tendrils. Although, to be honest, you should still have some food left. So you shouldn't have too much of a problem. and we'll finally be in the last little room here so go ahead and light the fire as usual go grab the journal and one final time we now need to tie the last person up which is Emmett so go ahead and relight the fire relight my fire fucking hell that's an old one anywho carry on back through the door and we'll now be in Char's room so take the last journal and as you do they'll say no don't wait go ahead and choose to tie them all up they'll all be tied to the pillars around Char's little area and before you run into Char at this point we really should go and bank so to bank simply head back the way you came you can right click on the cave and escape or simply teleport out makes no difference when you come back in you'll appear in this room uh, there's quite a few different ways to go out killing char gotta be honest but one thing to keep in mind is you can pick up the flint can from flint right next to us here when we come back in and you will be needing it so there's a few little things to start off with I'd highly recommend putting food and the flint can in your action bar so you can quickly spam it it is incredibly useful for this fight being able to spam that flint can gotta be honest uh, type of combat wise how to take down char I'm not sure which is the best previously it was range although from what I've been finding all across the net is people are using melee simply because you can use a whip and a dragon dagger which both got fastest reading alternatively you could use knives or darts this boss is very very frustrating I gotta be honest for whatever reason I wasn't hitting it this is probably about the ninth attempt you're seeing on screen now 
and basically she keeps saying yeah get out and then just kicks her out of the room for no reason I don't really understand as I was stabbing her in the face at the time but to start off with go ahead and talk to Char that'll start the fight quickly run around the room constantly spam that flint can making fires just spam the living shit out of it go mental keep running around the room avoiding Char and at the same time spamming this keep doing it till you've got about 20 fires on a go couple of attacks Char will stomp which will put out the fires as you've just seen on screen there she gets like this white glow about her when she does that she's in rage mode she'll hit triple damage against you if you start to attack her the easiest way to do it is simply run away from Char when she's raging and constantly keep lighting fires once you've got about 20 up go ahead and use turmoil if not any kind of stat boosting so if you're using range whatever the range equivalent is same with a melee and mage and then just lay into her. If you've got about 20 fires on the go, you should be knocking off 5k a pop. Although, to be totally honest, for whatever reason, her defense rating is absolutely massive at the moment. So it's hard work trying to get a hit out. But as soon as your fires go down to about 12, 10 or 12, run away from her again and constantly keep lighting these fires. It's exactly the same thing throughout the entirety of the fight. Avoid rage mode, light fires, make sure you've got lots of fires up. At the very least, keep about 10 fires on the go. Ideally, you want about 15 to 20. When Char eventually gets down to about 50% HP, those firewalls we've seen previously doing the little puzzle rooms, they'll start coming as well, so it's kind of like a mini QBD fight, except for she follows you around. There's a couple of methods. You can simply just run through the gaps, which is ideal, as you won't take any damage. The other is to wait until the firewalls pass you while you're standing in the gap itself. I would not recommend doing that under any circumstance. As, basically, if Char happens to hit you, then you get hit by the firewall and she goes into rage mode, you can quite simply be one shot. Don't want that to happen. So at best, run through the holes. At worst, just run through the fire. As always, when you get enough fires lit, go ahead and lay into Char as much as possible. If you're using range or magic, you can constantly attack Char as you're running around lighting these fires. If you're using melee, then follow the method you see on screen. There are many, many, many videos on YouTube for the range method. The only difference between the melee and range method is, while you're ranging, you light fires and range at the same time. So you take a shot, light a fire, run. Take a shot, light a fire, run. Take a shot, light a fire, run. Very straightforward. There's absolutely nothing to worry about in this quest. If you happen to die while fighting Char, don't worry. You won't appear on a grave or anything. You'll just appear outside Char's little battle area. And then you can simply go to the bank, come back, and try again. So you can see these are the firewalls I was talking about. They will hit you for about a thousand damage at a time, I think. They don't do a massive amount, but if you get caught by it at the wrong time, it can be quite dangerous. So, for the rest of this fight, try and keep your health as close to max as possible. Whether you are ranging, maging, or melling, there's no point in using any skills at all not even in the slightest, it will not affect the amount of damage you do to Char. None at all. Char has got a fixed damage amount, the only way you can increase the amount of damage you're dealing to Char is by lighting these fires. Hence, why we're lighting fires. Additionally, it doesn't matter what defense rating you have, you could have full Torva. The defense rating will not make a difference, she'll still be battering you sideways. The only difference armor does make it gives you that nice life point bonus which is very very useful simply because you can survive more hits there is a nice little trick for the rangers and majors which you can actually employ is these fires actually kind of act like barricades against char 
So you could simply stand behind one and range from behind the actual fire itself. Although bear in mind, Char can put them out like that. So you still need to keep a bit of a distance, but you can safely range her without taking any damage whatsoever. But as soon as you get Char down to about that much life, she will eventually surrender. Unfortunately we don't get to kill her. And you'll see what I mean now by taking lots of damage all at once. As you can see I nearly got KO'd and she did go straight into rage mode as I said before. It is very dangerous. So I would recommend just simply running through the fire. But as soon as chat surrenders, everyone will appear. Quickly run through the chat. And that is pretty much it, people. In a nutshell. So as soon as you regain control, you want to head up towards the north side and up the stairs. And then out of the cave. And as soon as you're out, you'll have this little cutscene here. And then, quest complete. Happy days. So, congratulations if you've just completed the quest. For doing it, you get two quest points, 80k fire making, 30k agility, 76k constitution, the Book of Cha, access to two fire making events in Balthazar's Bonanza Sergas, and access to Cha's training cave. Additionally, you get the two extra spins on Squeal of Fortune, same as usual, and you can actually get a new pet from inside Char's cave itself, if you so wish. So that is pretty much it for this one. You've got a choice between four pets in the cave. One is a warming flame, a twisted fire starter, glowing ember and searing flame. Uh, if people request it, I might make a video just for them later, but you never know. That is pretty much all the requirements now for this new Mega Guthix quest, which should be out next week I would have thought so with that said and done I will catch you then I'll hopefully do it on release again so until next time later